Pedagogy of Environmental Studies, Unit 2, Understanding Teaching and Learning EVS from the Perspective of Learners. Jerome Bruno. Jerome Bruno was an American psychologist who made significant contributions to cognitive psychology and cognitive learning. Bruno was born blind due to cataract on 1st of October 1915 in New York City. An operation at the age of two years restored his vision. He received a bachelor degree in psychology in 1937 from Duke University and went on to earn a master degree in psychology in 1939 and then a doctorate in psychology in 1941 from Harvard University. While Bruna was at the Harvard University, he published a series of works about his assessment of the current educational systems and ways that education could be improved. In 1960, he published the book which he named The Process of Education. Bruna felt that the goal of education should be intellectual development as opposed to road memorization of facts. Bruna held the following beliefs regarding learning and education. He believed curriculum should foster the development of problem-solving skills through the processes of inquiry and discovery. He believed that subject matter should be represented in terms of the child's way of viewing the world. He felt that curriculum should be designed in such a way so that the mastery of skills leads to the master of still more powerful ones. He also advocated teaching by organizing concepts and learning by discovery. Finally, he believed culture should shape notions through which people organize their views of themselves and others and the world in which they live. Spiral Curriculum Spiral Curriculum is an approach to education that introduces key concepts to students at a young age and covers these concepts repeatedly with increasing degree of complexity. Spiral curriculum is a teaching approach in which each subject or skill area is revisited at intervals. It involves information being structured so that complex ideas can be taught at a simplified level first and then revisited at a more complex level later on. Therefore, subject can be taught at levels of gradually increasing difficulty and hence the spiral analogy. Ideally speaking, teaching this way will lead students being able to solve problems by themselves. According to Brunner, any subject can be taught with spiral curriculum approach. Brunner, three modes of representation. Brunner, in his research on the cognitive development of children, proposed three modes of cognitive representation. Number one, an active mode. Number two, iconic mode. Number three, symbolic mode. Let us see these modes briefly one by one. An active mode, which is the representation of knowledge through actions or action base, starts from birth up to one year old. In an, an active mode, a child learns about the world through hands-on actions like touching, feeling, and manipulating. 
The inactive mode, which appear first in children, involves the encoding and storage of information in child's memory. Iconic mode, which is the visual summarization of images or image base, starts when the child is one up to six years old. In this mode, a child learns through pictures, videos, manipulatives, and diagrams. Iconic mode involves an internal representation of external objects, visually in the form of mental image or icon. For example, when a child is drawing an image of a tree or thinking of an image of a tree, it means that the child is using or visualizing the iconic stage. This may explain why, when we are teaching or learning a new subject, it is often helpful to have diagrams or illustrations to accompany verbal information. Symbolic mode, which is the use of words and other symbols to describe experiences, is a language base and starts when the child is seven years old and onward. Here, the learner develops the capacity to think abstractly and can interpret words and symbols. The symbolic mode is when information is stored in the form of code or symbol such as language. For example, the word dog is a symbolic representation for a single class of animal. In this mode, most information is stored as words, mathematical symbols, or in other symbol systems. Bruno believes that all learning occurs at this mode, that is, symbolic mode. Bruno also believes that learning begins with the direct manipulation of object. That's why, as teacher, we should understand that learners should have an opportunity to directly manipulate objects and they should be encouraged to construct visual representations such as drawing a shape or a diagram. Language development. Like Bygotsky, Bruno believes that social interaction plays a fundamental role in the development of cognition in general and language in particular. He emphasized that children learn language in order to communicate and at the same time, they also learn the linguistic code. Discovery learning. Discovery learning is a technique of inquiry-based learning, which emphasizes the active role of learner in building understanding and making sense of information or in other words, learning by doing. The concept of discovery learning implies that Learner construct his or her own knowledge. Discovery learning occurs when the child is not provided with an exact answer but rather materials in order to find the answer. According to Bruner, the role of teacher should not be to teach information by rote learning but instead to facilitate the learning process. This means that a good teacher will design lessons that help students discover the relationship between bits of information. To do this, a teacher must give students the information they need but without organizing them. Bruno suggests that students are more likely to remember concepts if they discover them on their own as opposed to those that are taught directly. That is the basis of discovery learning. Classroom implication of Brunner's theory. According to Brunner, children should be provided with study materials, activities, and tools to develop their cognitive capabilities. For example, when a teacher wants to help students learn about dinosaur, he could use all three modes of representation. That is, he can ask students to construct a model of dinosaur, which is an inactive mode. 
or he can show them a film about dinosaur which is an iconic mold or he could ask them to consult texts and books and then let them discuss their findings which is a symbolic mode of representations here are some of the implications of Bruner's theory number one instruction must be appropriate to the level of the learners after being aware of the learner learnings mode that is the inactive mode iconic mode and symbolic mode teacher can plan and prepare appropriate materials for instruction according to the difficulty level of the learners number two teacher must revisit materials to enhance knowledge building on pre-taught idea to grasp the concept is of paramount importance in order to push the learner to a deeper comprehension and longer retention number three material must be presented in a sequence that is giving the learners the opportunity to a acquire and construct knowledge b transform and transfer learning number four students should be involved in using their prior experiences and structure to learn new knowledge number five teacher should help students to categorize new information in order to be able to see similarities and differences between items to summarize we have learned about key ideas of bruno regarding learning and education then we also learn a little bit about spiral curriculum the three modes of representation language development discovery learning and last but not the least classroom implication of Bruner's theory thank you